Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I did this painting of a snow leopard in acrylics. Now the very first thing that I like to do when working with acrylics is I will paint in my background first. Now for this I used my airbrush to create that nice soft bokeh effect and I do have all of this available as a real time tutorial on my Patreon channel and I do show you how to do that background as well. So if that's of interest I'll link my Patreon in the description below. So once the background is done, that's when I put my outline of my snow leopard in place and then I can start working on the subject itself. Now with any subject, regardless of what it is that I'm painting, I will always do the eye first because that's where the emotion and expression stems from. So I do want to make sure that I get that accurate. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to move on to the fur around the eye. Now here, my main aim initially is to block in my main lights and darks. I'm not really focusing on the details that are sitting on the very top of the fur. I'm not focusing on any details at all really. I'm just starting to build up my layers gradually and it's now at this point where I start switching over to a liner brush where I'm starting to replicate more of that natural fur texture. Now I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for painting realistic fur in acrylics. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. Now one of the things that I mentioned there is about the importance of fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. Now when working with the snow leopard here, this was the first time I painted one of these big cats and I soon realised just how dense and thick their fur is. So I had to make sure that I added enough layers here and built up those layers in the right order in order to replicate that fur texture. So because this is available on my Patreon as a real-time tutorial, there are no parts sped up, there are no sections cut out. I'm able to explain these layers and the way that we need to be building them up in the moment. So with a voiceover while I'm painting, there really is no parts that I rush over or leave out. This makes it a perfect one to paint along to. But going back to one of those elements where I talk about fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. This is something that I do focus on with any single element where I'm painting fur. This is going to be required to be adjusted depending on the fur texture that we're painting. But here I wanted to make sure that I created that thicker looking fur and the only real way to achieve that is by layering. Now if I was to map in my brightest details after on top of my base layer, that there is going to significantly limit how much depth I've got within the fur. What I need to be doing, and we're going to see this here when we start to map in more of the fur on the face, that I start with an accurate base layer. You can see here it's not one solid colour, I'm hinting at my lights and my darks, and I'm also trying to get my base layer fairly soft and well blended. Now this is something that can be a little trickier to do when working with acrylics due to the fast drying time, but this is why it's something that I cover in depth in my real time tutorials on Patreon because you can make acrylics work in a very similar way to oils by slowing down that drying time. Now once I was happy with that base layer, you can see here that I'm starting to build up the texture of the fur and it actually comes together fairly quickly. I worked with two or three textured layers, still not focusing on those details that are sitting on the very top. Once I've got that fur about 80% complete, I'm then going to start mapping in the fur for the rest of the face. Now if you've seen many of my other tutorials here on YouTube, you'll know that I like to work in small sections. Now this here is a prime example. Look at how often this fur direction is changing. It curves in many different ways and that's not random. It's really important to make sure that we replicate that accurately. Now the reason being, the fur direction with a shorter coated animal like this is never random it is always going to be following and being determined by the underlying bone and muscular structure. So if you've got a curve and the variation in the fur direction, for instance, above the eye, that there is showing that that's where the eye socket emerges onto the skull and you've got that shape of the head that we need to replicate. Now one thing as well that's really important to note is if I was working on a lighter coloured background, I would be mapping in the black spots first because I would be using those as my guidelines for where I need to put the fur in between. But because I had such a dark background, the black spots wouldn't really show up so I started mapping in the lighter fur around the spots and then I put the spots in after. Now there really doesn't matter which order you do it, do whatever you're comfortable with, but for this that seemed like the more logical way to go.
Once I've built up that first initial fur texture, this is where I start to go back in and add more of those finer details. But I can't stress enough that this is still not the details that are sat on the very top. Those details really do need to be left until those last layers. Now this current layer that I'm working on, you can see that I'm adding a little bit of a darker purple colour over some of those areas. Now this is something called a glaze and this works beautifully with acrylics and it's why I love Liquitex Basics paint because they are quite transparent. Now it's one of the reasons why they can get a little bit of negative feedback based on how translucent some of those colours can be but if you don't want to worry about colour mixing and getting the exact colour early on, working with glazes throughout the layering process to adjust that colour in stages is a really good stress-free way of getting that colour matched to your reference photo. Now again, picking specific colours, mixing paint, knowing which colour to use depending on what we can see in our reference photo is questions that I'm asked all the time and it's why I cover all of that in my Patreon tutorials. But you will see throughout this stage of this painting that I'm going to be using glazes throughout because I personally don't have to worry about mixing the exact colour early on. Now I also wanted to drag in quite a lot of the blues and the purples from the background within the fur but I still wanted to balance it up with some of those natural warmer colours that the snow leopard has which is why through times and in between stages here I'm also going to be adding some warmer glazes. So I've got a big mixture of some browns, some light tans but I'm only putting them in a few areas because I did want the bulk of this colour background to be reflected into the fur. Now this is something as well that where you're changing your background from the original reference photo it's really a good idea to bring in some of those colours into the fur because then you're going to make the painting flow. What I wouldn't want to do is end up changing the background, sticking with the colour for the main subject with the original reference photo and then create a bit of an imbalance where it makes people look at the painting and think well they look like they were taken from two separate photos. We want it to look seamless like that animal was photographed with that backdrop which is why here I've dragged in so many more blues and purples to the snow leopard's fur. Now however with this Patreon tutorial I do also provide the original as well as the edited version that I was using for this layout for the painting so that if Patreon members wanted to follow along to this tutorial but use the original rather than the blues and the purple version then they've got both options there. Now as I start to build up the fur on the bridge of the nose, the one thing that I want to point out here is that fur length. Look at how much shorter my brush strokes are compared to the fur around the eyes and on the top of the head. There is a massive difference here and this variation is what's going to help to build up more realism in our paintings. If we create the same length of brush strokes from start to finish all over the entire subject, it's not going to look realistic. We'll end up making the bridge of the nose, for instance, as fluffy as the rest of it and that's just not how that snow leopard is in real life. So really paying attention to that reference photo and seeing where we need to adjust the length of our brush strokes is going to make a huge difference to what that painting looks like when finished. Now something else that then will follow on from that is the thickness of your brush strokes. Now when using a liner brush, which I used a lot throughout this painting, the amount of pressure that you apply to that brush is going to then dictate how thick those lines are. The more pressure you apply, the thicker the line is. The less pressure you apply, the finer that line is. Now with every brush that is going to be the case regardless but it is more exaggerated with a liner brush because they have such a long bristle. And the liner brush is one of those ones where I would recommend get a bit of cheaper watercolour paper and just use some standard black paint. It doesn't have to be anything special or high quality. And just practice using a liner brush with those two supplies before you start using it on your painting. You'll find that that takes a lot of that stress out because using a liner brush it is all in how much pressure you apply and the consistency of the paint. Now I have a video here on YouTube and it's about how to paint fine lines like whiskers. So if that's of interest, I'll also link that in the description below as well. But practicing with a liner brush is one of the things that once you've got that mastered, it's like riding a bike, you won't forget it, but getting to grips with how to use that brush can take a little bit of practice. 
Now, one thing I mentioned there was the consistency of the paint. And I'll just quickly mention two things that are going to affect that when using a liner brush. If your mixture is too thick, so you've added too much paint, that paint will not be able to leave the brush. So you won't be able to create those long, fine lines. If you add too much water and the mixture is too thin, you're gonna have the opposite. So you'll either end up with details that are too transparent or potentially they might run. That's a really good indication that that mixture is far too thin. You wanna make sure roughly it's about the consistency of milk. That's usually the best way to get that liner brush to work in the right way, but it is a bit of a experimentation process. But once you've got more confident with the amount of consistency of the paint that you need, it is far easier to then use that liner brush. It just takes a little bit of practice. And then I say this on every YouTube tutorial, but the last thing that I add to my paintings are the whiskers. They are gonna be overlapping everything else. So you can see here that I'm painting in all of the fur on the face first and the neck to make sure that there are no areas that I need to add. So when I add my whiskers, I can just paint straight over everything else. If I were to paint these whiskers in first and then try to finish the fur behind it, I'm gonna to have to paint around all the whiskers and that takes so much longer. And here is a photograph of my finished painting. So I really do hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful. And as I say, if you are interested in painting this snow leopard as well, then the real time tutorial is available on my Patreon now. You get the reference photo, line art and full material list with the tutorial. So if you've got any questions about that or anything art related, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. I really do hope this tutorial was useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. I'd be very, very grateful. And if you wanna get notified of the two to three videos I upload to YouTube every week, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna be uploading another video to YouTube next week.